Hello, Kim Holcomb, King TV, Seattle. It is What's up, so Kim? awesome. King TV, man. I, I remember King TV. I remember King I TV. I know you yeah. guys do. First, really quickly, full disclosure, when you guys played at Climate Pledge Arena in October and you heard an insane man and woman screaming from the other side of the arena, that was my husband and I. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's who it was. I just didn't know if it was a conflict of interest. Just wanted to be totally transparent. Dave, though, speaking of King Five, I'm curious how much your performance in this film was influenced by your appearances on Almost Live. I have to say, Almost Live was like my summer stock. Okay, that's what that was sort of that was the beginning of me becoming a thespian. And so here we are now, finally starring in my first full-length feature Hollywood film. I, I couldn't have done it without Almost Live. So I have to thank everyone, everyone there. Steve Wilson, give, I gotta give big love to Steve Wilson for giving my, my first break. My first I'm texting break. him as soon as we are done to tell him that you said so. Um, I do love, there are some sort of Seattle grunge references in this film. My favorite is y'all do the Pearl Jam yeah. high five <laughs> high. I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was an improv moment. That was not in the script. It just really? Kinda, yeah, it just kind of happened. Do you <laughs> actually yeah. do that though? Then that's my question. Do you? Is well, this? Well, I feel like do? everyone's going to be doing it from now on, <laughs> because I, I guess it was just a silly moment in one of the takes. It was an improv moment, and uh, and then we actually brought it back for another scene, and of course, in reference to the great Pearl Jam debut, ten of them all high fiving on the cover. Um, we're gonna have to answer for that. In which we are all dear <laughs> friends with all of them. We, we yeah, I Matt Cameron, yep, one of my yeah, heroes. Like, we love that. Have Eddie love. or Jeff, do they know about this yet? Please. They will. Outside of the restraining <laughs> orders that they've already had on us, <laughs> uh, we haven't heard it. Uh, it's yeah. just been legal teams back and forth. Yeah, not a peep, yeah. not a peep. <laughs> okay, since you're all together, I'm hoping that you can just, I'm gonna ask you guys a couple of questions and you can just point at the person in the room who best fits this description when you were filming. Okay, so like who was most likely to eat all of the food at craft services? That's me. Pat. Pat, he's not here with us right now, but yes, it would be Pat. Okay, what oh, about snacker. who was most likely to ruin a take by laughing? They just couldn't hold it in. Rami? <laughs> because Good to know. I had a lot of scenes with Whitney Cummings and I was just, you know when you're super nervous and you giggle a lot? I was doing that. It's very sad. <laughs> How about who among you would actually get scared by a jump scare? That's a difficult one. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think it happens. No. You guys are just hardcore. You have That's horror right. in your bodies. And well, not... we're, we're dead inside. So that, that kind of stuff is <laughs> not with us. We're soulless. Um, I love that you shot the film in a real house where you've actually recorded. You had your real instruments there, but I need to know, were the snacks that I was seeing everywhere, the real kind of food that you all eat and the PBRs and the Doritos everywhere, was that all based on reality? Well, Pat is the snackiest ass mf -er I've ever met in my life. <laughs> snacks follow Pat. He is. And an on our tours, I say that we're, you're never more than 20 minutes away from a meal on a Foo Fighters tour. It's just sort of like a, a trail of food everywhere you go. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's all over. It could be I Chips Ahoy. Oh. It could be a matcha thingy dingy. It could be a smoothie. Yeah. I just touch the beers and the whiskeys. I'm not really big on <laughs> snacks. <laughs> um, I love that the theme song was composed by John Carpenter, his son, and his godson. How did you make this happen? Well, it's a funny story. Our lighting guy, Dan, who's been with us for a million years, went on tour with John Carpenter and did his lights when John Carpenter was performing his music in front of live audiences. So when we told Dan we were making a horror film, he goes, oh, I know John Carpenter. You should see if he'll make a cameo. And we're like, there's no way he'll ever do that. But he gave me his email address and I just sent him an email and said, hey, my name's Dave in a band called Foo Fighters making a horror film. If you're not doing anything, it'd be cool if you made a cameo. And he emailed back and said, well, since you took my son's band on tour 15 years ago and treated him so well, I'll not only be in your movie, but I'll also write the theme song. So it was like, it couldn't have, 
It's just, it's hard to imagine anything Good deeds. that awesome, but it really happened. Good deeds. I think that is one of the best stories I've ever heard. And I love that he actually believed it was you and didn't think it was some like Nigerian scam. Hi, this is Dave from a band called Foo <laughs> Fighters. I'm in jail right now. $5,000. $5,000. <laughs> I'm in jail right now. Please help me. I need a main title and a cameo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I know you guys have a lot more interviews to do, but thank you for your time. Thank you for your music. And we'll see you back here in Seattle in August. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care.